ICE model that better fits our data than the Poisson model. Now, just to close, um, what you really want to do at the beginning, as a matter of fact, <laughs> to kind of um, check this out is looking at the um, actual distributions of the data. So if we go in and we take a look at the baseline, uh, baseline values here, here we go, um, for a peak drink, and we want to look at some statistics here, we want to look at some plots, just kind of see how this data is distributed. Um, so you want to, in terms of this, I always choose the descriptives. The outliers can tell you um, which case numbers the outliers have if you're interested in that, but I don't usually find that for EDA too helpful. For descriptive, you can take off the stem and leaf. That's pretty old school. That was before computers could really um, make pictures efficiently, but the histogram and the normality plots with tests will help you really be able to assess how normally distributed your data are. Now, I already happen to know that these data weren't normally distributed, so that kind of helped me out. I'm going to say OK now. And when we run this test, what you're going to see is a few things about this data. Technically, um, what we want to have is that for Poisson, as I mentioned before, the mean and the variance should be equal. That's the assumption of a Poisson distribution. So you can see here, with the variance being about five times the mean, or actually about four times the mean, um, you can see that this is probably one of the reasons the model was a little over dispersed, so the variance was larger than the mean, so the, the range of data values was larger than would be expected with a Poisson distribution. You can kind of already see there why the negative binomial model, which is good for overly dispersed Poisson data, actually fit better um, because it can take a variance that's greater than the mean. In fact, that's what the model is for. Um, particularly in this. So we already see this model is not normally distributed according to the Cole, McGraw, Smirnov, and Shapiro-Wilk tests. And you could really see that in the histogram. So you can see a lot of zero inflation and a pretty long positive tail um, and skewness. And here you can see that skewness um, instead of the dots lining up nicely along our normal uh, line here, we can see that they kind of drift off at the end, which indicates our skewness of our variable. And you can see that again in the detrended plot. Um, so instead of having sort of a cloud of data points, we have a clear line that pulls up away from the normally distributed line that we would expect. And that's also shown here in the uh, box and whiskers plot. So that kind of confirms what we would think, knowing that the variance is higher than the mean, um, knowing this data is positively skewed, and also knowing that we have count data, um, that the negative binomial model we can be pretty well assured is a pretty good fit for this data. Now maybe we didn't quite get the fancy interaction we were hoping for, but we can be pretty confident in the validity of our results. So thank you very much. I enjoyed working with you today, and I hope you join me again.